Iron Man, Black Panther, Spider-Man, the Hulk, and the Guardians of the Galaxy are about to team up for what promises to be the biggest superhero smackdown in cinematic history. To help celebrate this weekend's release of the Avengers Infinity War, I wanted to take you back to a time when the team had to assemble in 16 bits. Turn back now if you don't want to know what happens next, because today we're going to be spoiling the story and endings of Captain America and the Avengers on the Genesis, Nintendo Entertainment System, Super NES, Game Gear, and Arcade. This is Game Over, the Early Years. Captain America and the Avengers first assembled in the arcades in 1991 as a four-player beat-em-up. You took control of either Captain America, Iron Man, Hawkeye, or Vision as the team attempts to defeat Red Skull and his army of supervillains. It's a rogues gallery of familiar faces, including the Juggernaut, Ultron, Crossbones, Grim Reaper, Whirlwind, Mandarin, and something called the Mech Taco? Is that even from the comic books? But don't worry, because the Avengers will get backup support from the likes of Wasp, Quicksilver, Wonder Man, and the Submariner. I could safe to say that Captain America and the Avengers is the most ambitious crossover event in history. The idea is the Red Skull has used his wealth and power to bring together all of the worst villains and then turn them into his puppets using mind control. It's a solid plan, but it doesn't stand a chance when Captain America shows up to save the day. The Avengers fight through a bunch of familiar beat-em-up locations, including city streets, the rooftop, more city streets, an underground facility, and a space station on the moon. They also toss in a few old school shoot 'em up stages to mix things up, which is something you certainly didn't see in the likes of Final Fight or Double Dragon. The Avengers will eventually make their way to Red Skull, who apparently is just hanging out on the top of his getaway ship. This fight also doubles as an elevator stage, because apparently Data East needed to fit every beat 'em up cliche into the game before it ended. But here's something you probably didn't see coming. The whole thing is a trap. That wasn't Red Skull you were fighting, but rather an imposter that transforms into a large robot. Captain America and team fight back, and here's what happens next. One year after beating up arcades, Data East brought Captain America and the Avengers home to the Genesis. The story and levels are essentially the same, with the four superheroes taking on the city streets, shooting down a sentinel, and so on and so forth. But things differ a bit when it comes to the ending. They ditch the comic book style frames in order to give us, well, this. Oh, no 
Now in 1993, Data East decided to port the game to the Super NES. You would think that with all that extra time and more powerful hardware, perhaps they might give us a better ending. This was not the case. They ended up cutting out all of the animation and that daring escape, instead giving us a few pages of text. The game doesn't even try to make an effort, it's really bad. Actually, it's worse than that, because both the Game Boy and Game Gear have better endings. When your Super NES port is outdone by the Game Boy, then you know something terrible went wrong along the way. I'm showing the Game Gear ending right now, but both handheld versions have the same ending. One is in color, and the other isn't. That's pretty much the only difference. Now, there is one Captain America in the Avengers game we haven't talked about yet, and that's the version released on the Nintendo Entertainment System in 1991. This is a significantly different game that swaps out old-school brawling for 2D platforming. Captain America and Hawkeye are on a mission to rescue the rest of the Avengers and collect a bunch of power stones. This sends our two heroes to a bunch of different American cities, including Miami, Philadelphia, Las Vegas, Portland, and Houston. We eventually get all the way to a space colony, which prompts Red Skull to threaten to kill Iron Man and Vision. But don't worry, because Wasp has already released Iron Man and Vision, freeing up the Avengers to kick Red Skull's ass. Here's what happens next. With no music and only a few poorly written lines, this is the worst ending. And it didn't need to be, since the rest of the cinemas had pictures of Captain America and actual dialogue. That opening cinema is so good, what happened Data East? Yeah, here's hoping Avengers Infinity War has a more satisfying ending. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Game Over, the early years. So here's a loaded question. Who's your favorite Avenger? And don't be that smartass that says I'm appeal, cause I'm on to you. I'll admit that I'm completely swept up in the excitement for Infinity War, so expect another Avengers related episode of Game Over next Monday. We'll also be back later this week with an Electronic Gaming Monthly Best and Worst episode that you won't see coming. Also, reviews. In the meantime, I strongly recommend you click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then...